So in my video where I was explaining the tech stack that I use to create my classic wild builds project, I talked about how I chose to use server-side rendering, specifically Next.js to do that, um, so that I could get good SEO um, and good ranking in Google and the search engines. And so I got a comment about that that asked the following question that I thought was very good and it can be kind of tricky and confusing, so I wanted to make a video answering it. So the question is Next.js versus Gatsby. You use Next.js for server-side rendering and SEO. Perhaps Create React app makes it too hard for server-side rendering slash good SEO. But can't Gatsby do those things just as well as Next and help with the photo optimizations as well? Or is there something Next has that still makes it better than Gatsby for this project? So we're gonna start by kind of going over how Gatsby works. So you can see the difference between how Gatsby would function if I used that versus how it currently works with Next.js. So I made a little diagram that I wanna start with and we're gonna go over how Gatsby works. So this is the basic flow if you're using Gatsby. So you create your website, you code it up in Gatsby and then you're gonna build the HTML pages for your Gatsby project. And when you build these pages, basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna make a request to the API or whatever content that you're using, and it's gonna generate static HTML pages. And so these HTML pages you then can upload to a CDN, which is a content delivery network. This could be Netlify, for example. This could be S3, a number of different places you could upload this to. Um, but you could have them sitting on some place that delivers static HTML files. And then in my browser, when I go to your website, it's going to go to the CDN, and the CDN is going to deliver HTML to your browser. And so that is kind of the flow of Gatsby. And so what you'll notice about this is the data is received at compile time. So when I generate or build the HTML pages, I am requesting data from the API, um, and I'm getting it there. So you notice on each request, the same data is sent back to your browser, right? Unless I rebuild all the pages and uploaded something new to the CDN, the same HTML is gonna be sent to your browser. Now compare this with how Create React app works. So how Create React app works is you are going to build your uh, React project the same as you would with a um, Gatsby project, but this time you're not fetching any data um, when you do that. You still put it on a CDN, and then what happens is when you send the HTML over to your browser, you do not see the whole page. So when I see the, send the HTML over here with Gatsby, basically the entire page has all the HTML content in it. Whereas over here, you may see a shell of the information, and then what's going to happen is the React code will execute, and in your React code, you may make an API call to fetch the data, and that gets rendered in your browser. So the, the difference between how it could work in Gatsby and how it could work in Create React app is the when the API call is happening. So you notice the API call is happening every time it is rendered in your browser versus Gatsby, the API call is happening when you build the pages. So there's a lot more API calls that are gonna be happening with the Create React app version, but they may be necessary. Uh, this particular version is not great for SEO. At least it does not do as well. And I'm gonna talk more about that claim um, in a second. Uh, it's also good to note that you can mix these two things. Well, actually, I'm gonna mention that in one second. Let me show you an example of what I mean by, uh, that should clarify what I mean by sending the whole HTML file and what I mean by sending a shell. So take two, two websites that I have built. So this is a podcast website that I had built for uh, Saffron. So it's podcast.mysaffronapp.com. So this is one URL. And this I built with Gatsby. So if I right click this and I say view page source, I can see all the HTML and CSS for this page. It is directly sent from the server. So this is before any JavaScript has been executed. No React code has been run. This is just the HTML that's sent to my browser. Um, so if I search this page, First, you can just see a lot of content in this, um, but I can search for behind the scenes and see if I can find that in here. And we can see that I can see the H1 tag that's being displayed here. All right, now compare this with a site that I created with Create React App. So this is for my main Saffron website. I made this with Create React App, and this uses client-side rendering. All right, so if I do view page source on this, what you'll notice is uh, there's basically no content. This is the entire HTML right here, right? And there's not really anything here. 
we see that there's this weird script tag with a function, but there's not really any information here, right? Um, and that's about the, the core of it. There's some meta tags, but other than that, there's no, you know, syntax HTML structure of the page. And so that's the difference, right? So uh, in this case, I'm not really making a, a data fetch to the API. The JavaScript just renders and displays the HTML there. Um, but you get the idea. So that's the difference between those two versions. Now compare this to what Next.js does. Uh, and this is, of course, really server-side rendering in general, not specific to Next.js. And I should mention that uh, this is considered like client-side rendering, what I'm displaying here. So that's what Create React App uses. Uh, and I guess this is what I would consider just static pages or what you could call pre-rendering. Because basically you are rendering it, you're fetching the data from the API and then storing that in the CDN. All right, so now notice what happens with Next.js. So you notice we don't really have a CDN. What happens is there is a server. So whenever I want to get some HTML, right? So I go to this URL in my browser, www.classicwildbuilds.com and I go to view this build, what happens? Well, it's going to send my request to the server. This server, it could be an express server, depends what you use, um, is going to make a request to your API, get all the information it needs for, for that page, and then it's going to send the HTML back for that page um, that you get there. And so you notice the position of where the API call is happening on each one of these. That's the real difference in, in how it really affects how it works. So now if I were to go to this project and I right click and I view page source, I'll come over here and I can see a bunch of HTML for the page. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this. I can see a whole bunch of data as well. And if we search for crit chance build, um, we can see here's the title of the page. So this is the other thing. I can dynamically create the, the title and stuff. Um, we can see, what is this, H1 or div? Oh, this is an H1 there you can see. But there you go. So we are actually seeing that the HTML sent back. We can see some structure to it. Um, and so now pretend for a second that I built this site with Gatsby. Um, what would happen, right? So let's say I took this approach um, and I compiled all my pages beforehand. Um, I want these pages to be good for SEO. So I do not want to do client side rendering for them. I want to take this approach. So what I would do is whenever a build was created, I would basically need to recreate the HTML pages and publish them to the CDN. And so this would need to happen whenever I edit a build or whenever I create a new build, whenever new content is added, I would need to rebuild the entire website and put that new HTML on the CDN. Um, because as you can see um, here, that's, that's when the API calls are happening. So if your data changes and you need to re-request data from the API, we basically have to rebuild the website. Um, and so that's why I chose not to cho use Gatsby for this because people are going to be creating content and editing content frequently. And every time that happens, I didn't want to recreate or rebuild the site. Now that's not to say I couldn't use it, use Gatsby to create this. There's really nothing stopping you from doing that, but I might have to build, I would build it in this way, in which case we're client side rendering that data. And then I could not get as good as SEO on those pages. And so that's pretty much the answer to why I chose to use Next.js is because you can dynamically create the content that is being served to the pages. Um, and so that's the gist of it. So that's that. I wanted to go back to my claim earlier that I talked about um, with uh, Create React App that the client side rendering was weaker or not as good for SEO. So I've seen, I'm no expert on SEO, but I've seen lots of uh, cases where people have switched to server-side rendering or gone back to client-side rendering and their performance has increased and decreased with SEO. So for example, Max who created spectrum.chat, um, we can see he made this tweet and he tweeted a graph and he said, guess when we introduce server-side rendering? Um, and you can just see this graph here and he said September and you can see right after September, traffic just totally picked up from Google um, so search rankings went up a ton when they introduced server-side rendering into their application. Here's a converse example. Um, so here they introduced uh, client-side rendering after having server-side rendering. It looks like they also did add some lazy loading. Um, 
and you can see what happened to their rankings, right? So they did, were doing well in SEO and then just died off after they introduced client-side rendering. So for that reason, when I was building this project, I wanted to make sure I had the best opportunity to get good SEO. So I went with server-side rendering uh, and I went with Next.js for that. Now, it's good to note Next.js is a framework that you can also use to use non-server-side rendering things. So for example, you can export it to static data or static HTML, similar to Gatsby. Um, personally, I have not used this yet, so I can't say how good it is or what the experience is like. I've only done the server-side export or server-side rendering of the pages. Uh, lastly, what I wanted to say was uh, this is from a video that I made. I made a little chart, and this really boils down to kind of how I view this. Uh, this is a very simplistic approach, but this is basically my decision tree when thinking about this. And I'll link the, where the video where this is from, where I talk more about when to use Gatsby versus Next.js versus Create React app. But I basically ask myself, do I even care about SEO at all? Some projects, I don't care about it. Like the Saffron app that I was talking about earlier, that one, I don't really care about SEO. All the stuff is guarded behind a login page. And so I chose to use Create React app. But some pages I do care about SEO, some sites I do, like the podcast page, I wanted that to have more SEO. Or maybe if I was building something like a blog or an e-commerce site where the data is changing maybe on a weekly basis or on a daily basis, um, then I would choose Gatsby. So it depends how much your, your data changes. So the data I care about uh, being SEO, does that change daily or does it change possibly every minute, every second? So with this particular project, WoW builds, the data could be changing all the time. People could be frequently changing builds. So I need to make it dynamic because the content was dynamic. That was being SEO. So I went with server-side rendering for that in Next.js. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to also uh, bring up a good resource if you want to read more into this. I really like this blog post, uh, Rendering on the Web. I'll link it below. They have a really nice chart that breaks down at the bottom too all the differences and all the different terms that you may have heard, server-side rendering, client-side rendering, rehydration. There's a lot of terminology that goes on between all these different ways that they're being used. And so this really breaks it down and explains the differences and uh, kind of demystifies some of the jargon. But there you go. That is why I chose to use Next.js for that project versus Gatsby or a Create React app.